G'day kids, make sure you hit the subscribe button, that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos that come out. Until then, enjoy this one. Ozzy is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Today we're going to read a famous book, an Aboriginal Australian Dreamtime story, and it's called The Rainbow Serpent by Dick Rufsey. Far off in Dreamtime, there were only people, no animals or birds, no trees or bushes, no hills or mountains. The country was all flat. Guriala, the great rainbow serpent, stirred and set off to look for his own tribe. He travelled across Australia from south to north. He reached Cape York where he stopped and made a big red mountain called Narrabulgan. He listened on the wind and heard only voices speaking strange languages. This is not my country. The people here speak a different tongue. I must look further for my own people. Guriala left Narrabulgan and his huge body made a deep gorge where he came down. He travelled north, stopping every evening to listen on the wind for his own people. He travelled for many days, and his tracks made the creeks and the rivers as he journeyed north. Travelling north from Narrabulgan, Guriala made two more mountains. One of them, Narradunga, was long and made of granite. The other, which had sharp peaks and five caves, was called Gormungan. His next resting place was at Fairview, where he made a lily lagoon called Minalinka. Guriala turned his great body round and round, but the ground was too hard to make it deep. One day he heard singing on the wind. He heard, ah, ah, ah. Those are my people singing, said Guriala. They are holding a big bora. He traveled north with the singing coming louder and louder. At the meeting place of the two rivers, Guriala found his own people. They were dancing and singing. He crawled up quietly and lay in hiding to watch them. He watched for a long time. Then he came out and was welcomed by his people. He told them, you men are not dancing properly and you are not dressed properly. Watch me and I will show you the correct way. Guriala showed the men how to fit a lump of beeswax on the back of their heads and use feathers to make a raid headdress. Like these ones. He dressed them with pandanas armbands and placed white bones through their noses. Then he taught them to dance and they copied him until they were tired. A big storm was gathering, so all the people built humpies for shelter. Two young men, the Bilbil, or Rainbow Lorikeet brothers, came running in looking for shelter, but no one had room. They asked their grandmother, the Star Woman, but she said, I have too many dogs, I can't help you boys. The Bilbil boys went to Guriala and found him snoring in his humpy. When the boys called out, he yawned and said, I have no room for you. The rain came heavier and the boys ran all about the camp looking for shelter, but no one would help them. The boys went back to Guriala and called out that the rain was heavy. Guriala said, all right, you wait. I will make my humpy bigger. He opened his mouth wide right up to the roof and said, all right, you can come in now. The Bilbil brothers ran into Guriala's mouth and he swallowed them. Then he began worrying about what his people would do when they found the boys were missing. He decided to travel north to Bora Banuru, the only great natural mountain in the land. Next morning, the people asked each other who had given shelter to the Bilbil boys. They found the boys were gone and saw the tracks of Guriala and knew he had swallowed them. 
The men took spears and followed after Guriala. Guriala travelled towards distant Borobanuru, the mighty mountain which towered far up into the sky. When he reached the cliffs around its base, Guriala crawled up them. He coiled up for a sleep with the Bilbil boys inside him. The people followed Guriala to the steep base of Borobanuru. The men tried to climb the cliffs. Emu, turkey, brolga, tortoise, possum, barramundi. They all tried but kept falling down again. Two Wangu or tree goanna brothers came along. Guranji, the emu, said to them, we cannot climb this steep mountain. The Wangu said, we will climb up to rescue the Bilbil boys. They each made a knife from quartz and began to climb the mountain. The Wangu brothers climbed for days and nights and on reaching the top found Guriala fast asleep and snoring. They crept up to him and the older brother said, we will cut him open. You start down there and I will start here. They cut until they reached the Bilbil boys who had changed into beautiful parrots with all the colors of the rainbow serpent. The Wangu said, you can come out. You are now rainbow lorikeets with wings and you can fly away. The Bilbil birds flew away. Look, there they are there. The Wangu brothers ran down the mountain. Guriala snored on until a cold wind blew through his empty stomach and woke him. He said, something is wrong with me, and looked about and saw where he had been cut and his dinner stolen. Guriala became angry and worked himself into a great rage. He began to thresh about in fury, his long red tongue flashing like lightning, and the great mountain shook and thundered as Guriala tore it apart in his anger. He hurled parts of the mountain all over the country to form the hills and mountains of today. All the people were terrified of the thunder on the mountain as Guriala knocked it to pieces. Some of them were killed by flying stones, others ran away to hide, turning themselves into all the kinds of animals, birds, insects and plant life that live in the country today. That is how it all happened back in Dreamtime. When Guriala's anger was spent, there was only a small hill remaining of the great mountain Borobanuru. He went down and disappeared into the sea where he remains to this day. Now the remaining people have to look after all the animals, all the living things which were men and women in the beginning, but were too afraid of old Guriala to remain as people. The shooting star racing across the sky at night is the eye of Guriala, watching everybody. There you go kids. What an amazing book about the dream time and the role that the rainbow serpent Guriala played in creating the mountains and the rivers and the animals. Hope you've learnt lots kids, hope you've enjoyed it and we'll hope to see you on our next story time with Ozzy. Until then, stay keen. Hey kids, did you have lots of fun today watching Ozzy? I hope so. Did you know that we've got a heap of Ozzy episodes on our YouTube channel? If you haven't already, go back and have a scroll through. I reckon you'll find some others that you absolutely love. And while you're there, why don't you hit subscribe? That way you won't miss out on any of our new videos that we bring out. We'll see you again soon kids. Until then, Stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right. Stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 Aussie,